Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this overview of the Sustainability Disclosure Standards IFRS S1 and IFRS S2. I'm Ross Maynard and I'm your tutor for this short course. The new Sustainability Reporting Standards IFRS S1 and S2 were issued on the 26th of June 2023 and come into force in 2024 for corporate reports from 2025. Before we review the standards themselves, let's have a brief look at the context in which they operate. Lesson 1. Background to the Sustainability Disclosure Standards Sustainable finance is a hot topic in business and in investing right now. Investors want their money to be used for good, and the public want organisations to help improve the environment. Sustainable finance involves taking environmental, social and governance, that's ESG, considerations into account when making investment decisions, in order to provide sustainability benefits for organisations, communities and the world as a whole. But sustainable finance is not charity. Sustainable investments are expected to make a financial return as well as deliver environmental and social benefits. However, the problem of greenwashing stalks business and the investment community, with organisations making marketing claims which have little reality on the ground. The European Union definition of greenwashing is, quote, the practice of gaining an unfair competitive advantage by marketing a financial product as environmentally friendly, when, in fact, it does not meet basic environmental standards, end quote. Climate change is real, and it's having an increasing impact on organisations and communities across the world. Carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are at their highest in at least 800,000 years. Average sea levels have risen around 23 centimetres, that's 8 inches, since 1880, with about 8 centimetres of that, 3 inches, gained in the last 25 years. Even if the world follows a low greenhouse gas pathway, which seems increasingly unlikely, global sea level will likely rise at least 30 centimetres above the year 2000 levels by 2100. These changes are a serious risk to the economy and regulators around the world are requiring organisations to review their potential impact. In May 2022, the Bank of England conducted financial stress tests on UK-based banks. These found that banks and insurers could face £340 billion worth of climate-related losses by 2050. The US Federal Reserve Board is currently conducting climate stress tests with six banks, the Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. It's likely that the results will be equally worrying. To quote Sam Woods, the Chief Executive Officer of the Prudential Regulation Authority in the UK, quote, Climate risks will become a persistent drag on banks and insurers' profitability, particularly if they don't manage them effectively. End quote. If you would like to find out more about the Bank of England stress tests, pause the video here and follow the link shown. Climate change brings risks to organisations and the economy, but it also holds opportunities. In response to these issues, the International Financial Reporting Standards Foundation set up the International Sustainability Standards Board in November 2021 in order to develop, and I quote, sustainability-related disclosure standards that provide investors and other capital market participants with information about companies' sustainability-related risks and opportunities to help them make informed decisions. End quote. In the two years since its formation, the ISSB has developed two global sustainability disclosure standards. These were issued on the 26th of June 2023, and they are IFRSS1, General Requirements for Disclosure of Sustainability-Related Financial Information, and IFRSS2, Climate-Related Disclosures. 
check out the link to the IFRS website if you want to know more. End of lesson one. Lesson two, overview of the sustainability disclosure standards. The purpose of the disclosure standards. The ISSB developed IFRS S1 and S2 to support alignment with the United Nations Sustainability Goals and other international, national and industry bodies. The aim of the reporting standards is to create a global baseline of sustainability-related disclosures so that organisations can demonstrate a consistent understanding of how sustainability factors affect their performance and prospects. The standards ensure that companies provide sustainability-related information alongside financial statements in the same reporting package. They're used in conjunction with all other accounting requirements. IFRS accounting standards are required by more than 140 jurisdictions worldwide. However, the sustainability disclosure standards must be adopted by the regulatory jurisdictions, so you should check how they will apply in your region or country. Overview of reporting requirements IFRS S1 and S2 are effective from the 1st of January 2024 for reports published from 2025. The reporting requirements vary by jurisdiction, so you should check with your own professional institute and regulatory bodies. In general terms at present, the requirements are limited to large and listed companies and public interest entities, with annual reports required from 2025. Small and medium-sized enterprises may be brought on board later, with the requirements set by each jurisdiction. The consultancy firm Deloitte have sponsored a very useful briefing paper at the link shown. End of lesson two. Lesson three, IFRS S1, general requirements for disclosure of sustainability related financial information. IFRS S1, general requirements for disclosure of sustainability related financial information. IFRS S1 is effective from the 1st of January 2024 for reports published from 2025. It requires an organisation to disclose material information about all significant sustainability-related risks and opportunities. It also requires disclosure of sustainability-related financial information as part of the entity's general financial reporting and it requires an organisation to explain the connections between different pieces of information, including between various sustainability-related risks and opportunities, and information in financial statements. The standard includes guidance to support the disclosure of material information. Why report sustainability-related risks and opportunities? Why do we need to report sustainability-related issues? The standard itself shows why it's important. Quote, An entity's ability to generate cash flows over the short, medium and long term is inextricably linked to the interactions between the entity and its stakeholders, society, the economy and the natural environment throughout the entity's value chain. Together, the entity and the resources and relationships throughout its value chain form an interdependent system in which the entity operates. The entity's dependencies on those resources and relationships and its impacts on those resources and relationships give rise to the sustainability-related risks and opportunities for the entity. End quote. IFRS S1 defines sustainability risks and opportunities as those which may affect the enterprise's value, including the value of equity, future cash flows, access to finance, and the cost of capital. Organisations are required to report the entity's governance of sustainability risks and opportunities, decisions made that could result in future cash flows that have not yet met the criteria for reporting. Impacts on the organization's reputation, performance and prospects as a consequence of the actions it's undertaken. The organization's development of knowledge-based assets. Reporting covers interactions throughout the entity's value chain. 
Most large organisations are likely to have to make decisions as a result of climate change that could affect future performance, cash flows or the value of their shares. And reputational issues are also very likely, so most organisations are going to be affected by IFRS or S1. We see in the last sentence there that reporting covers the organisation's entire value chain. So let's review what that means. The value chain. IFRS S1 defines the value chain as, quote, a value chain encompasses the activities, resources and relationships an entity uses and relies on to create its products or services from conception to delivery, consumption and end of life. This includes interactions, resources and relationships in the entity's operations, e.g. human resources, its supply, marketing and distribution channels, and the financing, geographical, geopolitical and regulatory environments in which the entity operates. End quote. Check out the documentation on the IFRS website at the link shown for more information. And what's covered by reporting? IFRS S1 states that sustainability-related risks and opportunities include employment practices and those of suppliers and partners, wastage related to packaging, events that could disrupt the supply chain, assets controlled, investments controlled, including investments in associates and joint ventures, sources of finance. That means that reporting under IFRS S1 will require you to examine the employment practices of your suppliers and partners to ensure they meet acceptable standards, to review packaging and recycling in your supply chain to ensure it's sustainable, and to consider climate-related events that might interrupt your operations. That is a tall order. End of Lesson 3. Lesson 4. IFRS S2 Climate Related Disclosures IFRS S2 Climate Related Disclosures IFRS S2 Climate Related Disclosures operates in a similar way to IFRS S1, but relates specifically to climate change. It requires the disclosure of climate related information to enable users of financial reporting to understand the effects of climate related risks and opportunities on the organization's strategy and decision making, including its transition plans. The reporting requirement covers four areas. One, governance, how the organization monitors climate related risks and opportunities. Two, strategy, how climate related risks and opportunities could enhance threaten or change an organization's business model or prospects. 3. Risk management. How climate-related risks and opportunities are identified, assessed, managed and mitigated by the organization. And 4. Metrics and targets. How the organization manages and monitors its performance for climate-related risks and opportunities. IFRS S2 also requires the organisation to undertake climate-related scenario analysis. In many cases, this will already be carried out if your organisation applies the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, TCFD. As defined by IFRS S2, climate-related risks include physical risks, those include actual or a potential storm, flood or wildfire damage, etc. And risks associated with transitioning to a low carbon economy. IFRS S2 Climate Metrics Under IFRS S2, an organisation is required to disclose relevant cross-industry metrics. These include greenhouse gas emissions in accordance with the Greenhouse Gas Protocol, both absolute and intensity metrics. Transition risks, the amount and percentage of assets or activities vulnerable to climate-related transition risks. Physical risks, the amount and percentage of assets or activities vulnerable to climate-related physical risks. 
Four, climate opportunities. The amount and percentage of assets or activities aligned with climate-related opportunities. Five, capital deployment in dollars towards climate risks and opportunities. Six, internal carbon prices, if applicable. And seven, percentage of management remuneration linked to climate. End of lesson four. Lesson five, next steps and further information. IFRS S1 and S2 next steps. Concerns were raised about the capabilities and preparedness of organisations around the world to apply IFRS S1 to S2. The ISSB have introduced a proportionality mechanism. Regulatory authorities are allowed to consider that the level of information provided is reasonable and supportable without undue cost or effort meaning you're not required to spend excessive resources to gather the information required for reporting, although it will be the regulator that decides what is reasonable. The skills, capabilities and resources of the reporting organisation, meaning the regulator may allow a reasonable period for upskilling of staff to provide the information necessary. That doesn't mean that the organisation will be allowed to ignore the reporting requirement, Rather that the regulator will be lenient if the first one or two reports is more limited in scope than what they would expect. The difficulty for the organisation to provide specific aspects of information, meaning that the organisation will be allowed to state that some information has provided too difficult to collect. Again, it will be up to the regulator to decide what is reasonable. Regulators may allow entities in their jurisdiction additional time to work towards full disclosure. For example, a graduated approach to disclosure is being applied in the UK. In essence, the IFRS is expecting that the quality of these reports will improve over time. If an organisation feels that one or more of these caveats applies, they are advised to raise it with their auditors and to seek guidance from their regulator. What do accountants need to do? These new disclosure requirements provide a great opportunity for professional and career development for accountants. Sustainable finance appraisal and sustainability reporting provide interesting new avenues for accountants to explore. Areas for professional development include exploring the requirements of your professional institute and developing your continuing professional education plan learning about topics and issues in sustainability, including sustainable investment, researching sustainability metrics and how to measure and interpret them, integrating sustainability assessments into your organisation's investment appraisal process, determining the reporting and disclosure requirements for your organisation, learning about new approaches to life cycle costing, investment analysis and asset ownership, where social or environmental assets are created. Further information. Your professional institute should have further information about IFRS S1 and S2. In addition to that, I can recommend the briefing paper at the iasplus.com website in the first link. And of course, there's plenty of information on the IFRS website. You'll need to register to get access to it, but there's no charge and it's a very useful site if you're involved in reporting. The links are shown for documents about IFRS S1 and S2. And that's it for this overview of the new sustainability disclosure standards. They provide a good learning opportunity for you, and I urge you to find out more. Find out also if your organisation will be required to report against the standards. And if so, get involved in the team that will be working on creating a process for reporting. It will be good for your career. Thank you for taking this overview of the Sustainability Disclosure Standards, IFRS S1 and S2. I hope you found it useful and that you will have a look at some more of my courses. I'm Ross Maynard.